Hello and welcome to this video in which we will find the discrete time Fourier series for a periodic triangle wave. As you can see, I've drawn the periodic triangle wave here, at least one period of it. Uh, it's periodic with period n is equal to 12. And our goal is to find the discrete time Fourier series coefficients for it. Now, in and of itself, this, I mean, this is an interesting triangle wave, but it probably doesn't justify its own video. In the process of finding the discrete time Fourier series coefficients, we'll actually use uh, properties or a property of uh, the uh, Fourier series coefficients and uh, results that we've already derived in previous videos. So we're not going to work any summations. Um, again, one of the goals, <coughs> excuse me, one of the goals you often have is to avoid doing summations or integrals because there's easier ways to do it. So the way we'll do this is as follows. What I've graphed here is a one period of a square wave at time zero. It goes up to one and stays there for six samples and goes to zero for six samples. It's periodic, so it um, repeats this over and over again. So on out to infinity. And um, one of the useful things to know about square waves is that if you convolve a square wave with itself, you get a triangle. And so x of n, as I've plotted it here, this is a replot from the previous screen, this is r of n convolved with itself. Okay. Now, R of n is a periodic signal, so R of n convolved with R of n will also be periodic. Um, it turns out that, um, well, I've uh, done a video showing uh, convolving R of n with itself, a periodic convolution, so hopefully you'll find that useful. Um, the expression for X of n is the summation L going from 0 to cap n minus 1. You'll notice cap n for both of these waveforms is 12. For the uh, square wave, n p, number of uh, non-zero samples is 6. So this will be r of l, uh, r of n minus l. Okay, so um, we know that r n uh, from previous videos has the following uh, discrete time Fourier series coefficients. Uh, we have, um, uh, let's go ahead and call it, I guess, a sub k. Uh, a sub k, which are the discrete time Fourier series coefficients of this r. Uh, it's one half when k is equal to zero. And I should have made myself more room. It's one over 12 e to the minus j k 5 pi over 12 sine k pi over 2 divided by sine k pi over 12. Okay, so this is the case where k is not equal to 0. We have this expression here. And um, so we, we know the Fourier uh, series coefficients for r of k. We want to get the Fourier series coefficients for x of k. And to do that, we will use uh, this discrete time Fourier series property. That is that the periodic convolution of two uh, functions in the time domain, so x and y here are periodic, uh, the periodic convolution of x and y in the frequency domain shows up as, well, well, the periodic convolution is itself periodic, and it's a function that has as its Fourier series coefficients n times c sub k d sub k, where c sub k are the Fourier transform coefficients of x, and d sub k are the Fourier transform, co or the Fourier series coefficients of x and d sub k are the Fourier series coefficients of uh, y. So to go back to the problem that we're trying to solve, um, 
we know the Fourier series coefficients. We have that the signal we want is the convolution of R with itself. So that means that the Fourier series coefficients of x, which I'll call c sub k, these will be n, which is 12, times a sub k times itself. So it's a sub k squared. OK. So um, let's see. Let's uh, bring up a empty window and work out what these c sub k's will be then. OK, we have c sub k is equal to 12, that's n, times 1 half squared when k is equal to 0. And so 12 times 1 half squared is 12 times 1 fourth, which is 3. So our answer here when k is equal to 0 is 3. When k is not equal to 0, we have 12 times 1 over 12 e to the minus j k 5 pi over 12 sine k pi over 2 over sine k pi over 12 quantity squared. OK, so when we work this, and this again is for k not equal to 0. So when we work this out, we'll have 1 over 12 squared, but we'll have a 12 out here, so we'll be left with just 1 over 12. We'll have this term, the complex exponential squared, and if I square a complex exponential, then it's equivalent to multiplying the argument by 2, and then I'll have the sine k pi over 2 over sine k pi over 12 will have this quantity squared. I don't know of any good simplifications for this. Uh, this guy here, uh, we can cancel a 12 and a 2 and get 6. So this basically then gives us uh, the uh, discrete time Fourier series coefficients. Uh, to summarize, they're 1 over 12, e to the minus j, k, 5, pi over 6 times the, the sine term squared. And again, this is for k not equal to 0. For k equal to 0, it's 3. OK, so let's see what this looks like. Um, well, these are the Fourier series coefficients for r, that is for my square wave. And you can see that they look like this, except for uh, uh, the zeroth uh, coefficient, the even valued or the even numbered coefficients are zero, and this is what the phase looks like. When you take this and square it, basically you'll uh, square this magnitude and multiply it by n, and you'll multiply the phase angle by two. And if you look at the uh, Fourier series coefficients for x, you'll see that indeed the phase angles have been multiplied by 2. And uh, the uh, magnitudes have been squared. Uh, we get, uh, for these uh, middle coefficients, we get much smaller values for the triangle waveform, which is what x is, than we had for the uh, square waveform, which is what r is. That's because the triangle waveform has is shaped more like a sine wave than um, the uh, square wave is. So there you have it. We've uh, found the um, discrete time for a series coefficients for this x. Again, uh, the cool part about this is we've done it without working a summation by noting the fact that this triangle waveform is a rectangular or square wave, a rectangular wave convolved with itself. And in doing so, we've illustrated the convolution property, which says that if two time signals are convolved, their Fourier series coefficients are multiplied. So hopefully you found this helpful, and thank for watch thanks for watching.